Hello, friends. Welcome back to yet another episode of the Tango Banter. I'm Elizaveta, and I want to remind you right off the bat that Saturday, this Saturday, January 14th, from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time, I'm hosting Horacio Godoy for another riveting seminar on tango musicality, the history of tango, specifically focusing on the golden age of tango, in particular, Juan D'Arienzo and his contribution to the Milonguero style of tango that we all enjoy and listen to a lot at the Milonga. So if any of this sounds mysterious and interesting and you're interested in learning more about this, you definitely should check out the seminar. The link is in the show notes, uh, so you can click on that and sign up. And those of you who are interested in attending but can't attend live, you can still register and you will have the access to the video after the seminar. So since it's the beginning of the year, I thought I would harness that energy of beginnings and talk about beginning tango. And specifically today's episode as the title suggests, has to do with some of the essential things that I feel are really important for you to understand as a beginner. And those of you who are not beginners necessarily might find this episode useful in figuring out how to help beginners progress and how to help them succeed on the dance floor. So, before I launch into my list of eight things that I think are the most important for you to realize, there is a sort of a philosophical platform that I want to introduce to you and convey something that I think is really important as a premise, as a mindset uh, that you can adopt as you start Tango that makes it a bit more um, accessible, maybe even a bit more fun. And that is that when you start tango, it's easy to think about starting tango as a beginner. You don't know anything. You come into it and you're sort of a blank slate and you're having to gather knowledge and skills in order to be able to do it. This is how I felt about tango when I first started. And I'm sure if you're beginning tango, those sorts of emotions about, oh my God, there's so much to know, uh, those, of course, are present. However, the way I look at it now, and this is especially true when I work with beginners one-on-one, -on -one, is I want to start from the perspective that you are already a completely fully formed dancer. You already have all of the musicality and all of your creativity and your virtuosity is already there. And what you're doing is you're learning uh, a particular form that will allow that skill to shine. So when you're coming into tango, you can think of yourself already as a dancer, as an artist who is looking for a pathway, a conduit for expression. And when we approach it that way, then you realize that you don't really need to know everything. You don't need to um, sort of encompass all of tango in order to get somewhere. What you need to do is learn certain things that will allow you to feel most fulfilled as a dancer. So right away, it's really important for you to know that you are the source of your creativity. You are the source of your tango. And everyone who comes along the way, whether it's a teacher, a tango partner, a dance partner for the night, anybody who comes along the way on your journey 
is there to help you develop into the dancer that fulfills you, right? That, that gives you happiness at the same time that you are the source of this powerful creativity that I'm, that I'm saying you are, you want to realize that tango is a little bit like uh, surfing or sailing or other forms of uh, movement and expression that are sort of unpredictable. You know, when I was, I spent just a little bit of my time learning to surf at one point, I think, I think I went all of like five times. And what I've noticed that there was this frustration because as a beginner, I just want to, to sort of understand things step by step. And I want the waves to go slower and to be a little bit smaller. And I want to know what they're going to be like when they come. And I want to like push, push pause on things and review, but it's not possible. You sort of, you're sort of sucked into it and you have to just do the best you can over and over again. And that's, that's how tango really is. It always is like that. And so when you first start as a beginner, it feels so overwhelming and it feels like there's so much that you're supposed to know. And you might feel sort of disheartened by the fact that you might not be catching all of it all at once, but just know that that is a completely natural way of feeling because that's really how tango is. It's very unpredictable and at any moment, things that you felt you had figured out somehow don't make sense anymore because things have shifted. So these two things I want you to keep in mind as we launch into these um, eight points that I'm going to make. So number one is that you're coming into tango already an artist, already a dancer, no matter whether you've had any experience with it or not, but you're coming at it with this point of view that you already have something to say and that's why you're doing tango. Not that you're a completely blank slate and you don't know anything and you're expecting to be built from the ground up. Almost, you know, a metaphor I thought would be useful is thinking of yourself as a seed, right? If you think of a seed, everything that is a tree is inside that seed. Nothing doesn't, nothing has to be added. You don't have to change it in its in its seed form, it has all the information to grow into the full tree. And that's basically how we are when we come to tango or to any art form we decide that we want to pursue. And the second thing is that tango is this ocean that's very uh, finicky and uncontrollable. And I frequently imagine or I say that tango Dancing tango is like trying to control chaos, the practice of controlling chaos, you know? And so that is always going to be part of the experience. And it's definitely uh, acutely felt right at the beginning when you first start. So to start out with, my very first point that I want to make connects very much with this idea of controlling chaos. And that is that tango is not a linear process. Learning tango does not happen uh, in a very structured sort of way where one thing logically leads to the next and to the next. It, there's not a unified curriculum. There's not a unified agreement on what needs to be learned when and how much. It's, it's all sort of, it depends. It really depends. And you're going to find that when you learn something, you're going to have it one day and then the next day you completely forgot it. And that's one of the most frustrating experiences. And I think, I, I suppose it's possible that a lot of people quit tango in the first year because of those kinds of experiences, because it feels like you're not really getting it. So sometimes you'll also go through this process of learning a lot and then suddenly you have to step back from it. It's almost like too much and you have to completely cut yourself off. And then you'll spend, you know, 10 days, a month away from tango and you'll come back and all of a sudden you'll realize that what you didn't have before, you have it and you totally can do it. So it's sort of this interesting nonlinear experience. You don't really know 
why it happens the way it is. This is just sort of the quality of learning tango. And because I know for a lot of us, we really want to feel these markers that we're progressing, that we're actually getting somewhere. Uh, it's important to remember that they're not going to be uh, something that you can really keep solid, you know. So if your goal is to be able to, you know, have a good time at the Malanga and you have a really great night one night and then the next day you go, you have a terrible time. How do you judge those experiences um, is going to be a little bit more individual. Uh, and so don't uh, don't get caught up in that because it's definitely a really common experience for people to be frustrated in this way. And especially, I would even say, when I'm working with women who are learning to lead, this is a very common experience as well, that they'll come and they'll have a session and they'll learn something and it makes total sense and they're doing it perfectly. Next time they come, they don't remember it. And then there's this automatic recoiling or feeling of lack because you think, oh, there's something wrong with me that I'm not getting this. Am I defective? Why am I not getting this? But that's just the way it is. And I think um, other dancers will confirm uh, this experience. Number two, uh, it's important for you to understand that the number of years that somebody dances does not necessarily um, equate to a particular quality. And this is something that's sort of a sneaky little mindset trick that I, I think is important because I've noticed that beginner dancers might look at somebody who's been dancing for five or 10 years and immediately kind of put a lot of trust in what they think about tango, how they do it, just because of the years they've been dancing. Sometimes they'll make their decisions on who to study with based on the years that that person's been dancing, or you'll find that certain people get certain types of respect just because of the years that they've been dancing. Now, of course, the amount of years that someone's been dancing is a relevant marker, of course. When I dance with somebody who's been dancing for 25 years, I have incredible respect for that dancer because tango is, uh, you know, this interesting dance that a lot of people don't, don't last. So it is meaningful when I meet somebody who's been dancing tango for a long time and has seen the evolution of tango. However, just because somebody has been dancing for 25 years does not uh, mean that they are an excellent dancer or an exceptional dancer. And sometimes the amount of years gets thrown out uh, as, as a marker of your level. And one of the most annoying questions that I've uh, talked about with people, people most of the time really don't like being asked how long they've been dancing on the dance floor. And there seems to be a little bit of a kind of a, a sneaky, snobbish sort of feeling of like judging someone by the number of years that they've been dancing tango. And at the same time, discounting somebody who's only been dancing for a few years. There's many people who become extremely good tango dancers in a very short time, within a couple of years, three years, and they might dance a lot better than somebody who's been dancing for 20 years. It's, it's a very common occurrence. So for you to not take it so seriously, if you've only started and if you've only been doing it for a little while, and you might be dancing with somebody who is claiming that they've been dancing for 10 or 20 years, and maybe they wear it as a, a badge of honor or something, uh, don't, be, don't be fooled by that, because really years are, um, are not, they're, they're indicator of some things, but not of the skill. The skill of tango is not a linear progression. You don't get better just because you dance longer. Uh, there's a huge variety. Some dancers uh, continue to excel and get better technically. Other dancers perhaps uh, plateau at a certain level because they're happy where they are. Some dancers 
learn a lot of movements, a lot of choreography, a lot of sequences. Other dancers don't really care about that and they will stay in a more conservative realm of, you know, knowing just a few moves. Uh, some dancers go to classes all the time. Other dancers don't go to classes at all. Um, it's important to realize there's not, I, I really, I really believe there's not a better or worse. You just sort of understand that it, it's, there's as many varieties of approaching tango as there are people. So in this case, once again, it's important just to be aware of what's important for you. Uh, as a dancer. So the point number three, uh, I think is also going to be really relevant and connects to this because a lot of times I notice, um, that certain, uh, certain respect and weight is given to certain teachers who've been around for a long time. And this is where a lot of cases I hear, uh, teachers take a lot of pride um, in the fact that they've been dancing for a really long time. And so because of that, uh, they will be much more assertive about what they believe tango to be and how it should be danced. But then you'll find this to be the case with most teachers that they will be contradicting each other. So you might go to one teacher who's been dancing for many, many years and, and they have a whole philosophy and they will tell you that it's supposed to be this way. And then you'll go to Buenos Aires or you'll go to another teacher or to a visiting teacher from out of town and they will claim that they know it and they've been dancing for a really long time and they will have their own philosophy. And you'll be left there going, wait a second, this person is telling me one thing and this other person is telling me a completely different thing. How do I know? So again, it's important to just realize that teachers differ on their philosophies. And I always say that a teacher only can teach themselves, meaning they can only teach what they know for themselves, what they experience, what, what level of tango they know. So a teacher who is from Buenos Aires, who has grown up with the culture uh, and who cert has certain values uh, carrying on from that culture will have a very different philosophy or methodology than somebody who's teaching in Europe or United States. Somebody who is just a tango dancer and nothing else will be of a different mindset than somebody who is also a um, a dancer in a different tradition like ballet, or they know Pilates or gyrotonics or yoga that will inform them. So you will have these contradicting points of view as you grow. And that's okay. You don't have to resolve it. And in fact, you don't even have to argue with it. My suggestion is hear the point of view of each teacher, try it out for yourself and see which one you like. Sometimes it comes down to who do you personally resonate with? Who is just a person that you love working with and that you really understand how they explain things? And sure, they might not be right about everything, but you just like the way it feels to work with them. Or you might choose a different teacher because, uh, you know, with this teacher, maybe you got certain things figured out, but now you're at a different level and you need uh, a more sophisticated approach to something. So you go to someone else who knows more, who knows different. It really doesn't matter because ultimately the destination is going to be the same. <laughs> Our destination is to learn to dance in such a way that gives us the most freedom and accessibility and so that we can have fun. Or maybe if you have those ambitions of dancing on stage and performing, that might also be part of your, uh, part of your goal. So realize that you don't have to figure it out as a beginner. Uh, you can just take it all in, keep track of it. And whenever you are not clear on something, make sure that you don't just take their word for it just because they are the teacher and they've had 10 years of experience or 20 years of experience. Ask the questions. Remember, you are the artist, you are hiring the teacher, you know, think of it this way. It's not like you are 
some little pupil coming to a master to learn an art form. That's one way of looking at it. But another way of looking at it is you're an artist, you're a dancer who's looking to uh, create a way for yourself to grow and to find a new path of expression. So you're hiring the teacher to explain things to you in a way that you understand. So that somebody might explain it one way, take it in, try it out. Somebody might say the complete opposite. You take that in, you test it out. And over time, you'll figure out for yourself what works. And you'll be finding sort of like that you're integrating little pieces. For me, my, my whole philosophy was built on multiple people over the years contributing little pieces and some of it I've taken on and it became a permanent addition to my practice as a dancer and some of it I had to let go because it wasn't really relevant or I ended up disagreeing with it. Ultimately, not one person really knows all of tango and I, I often really believe that tango dancers are co-created by the community because when you begin to dance social tango and with the purpose of dancing at milongas especially every person that you dance with is a teacher in certain ways it's somebody who's helping you develop as a dancer and gives you that opportunity to practice so over time all of the people involved in your circle are going to contribute to that um, to that goal so we've just gone through the top three so that it's not linear, or first three, I should say, that it's not linear. Uh, just because somebody dances many, many years doesn't mean that they're a good dancer. There's other things that decide that. And there's a lot of disagreement about teachers. So don't got to get hung up on, you know, is this right or is that right? Just take it in, try it out, see if it works for you. Now, the number four is an important one, and that is that it's okay not to get it at first, especially if you're coming in and you've never done any sort of movement. Let's say you uh, have never done any yoga, you've never done any sort of consistent form of exercises, and tango is like your first movement practice. There is a lot there to take in. So for you, just allowing yourself to be present and kind of almost like you're an open satellite. You're just taking it in, taking it in and let it percolate, let it digest. Don't, don't worry about not fully understanding it. The other type of student that I've met uh, quite a bit is students that come from other dance forms and they already are quite adept and masterful at another dance like salsa or swing or jazz or ballroom. And they come into tango and it's a completely different experience. And it's so difficult for them to face this inability to get it right away because they're so masterful in their own dance of, you know, their prior experience. So it feels unfair and <laughs> insulting not to get it right away. And I know that for me, when I came into tango, I was uh, at that time, uh, a yoga teacher and I was very uh, advanced in my practice. I was teaching a lot. I was leading workshops. I was doing teacher training. So I felt very comfortable as a mover, as a, as a yogi, as a practitioner of movement. And there was some ego involved there. Of course there is. So when I got into tango at first, I mean, it was terrifying and I felt so dumb. Like it just seems incredibly difficult uh, at first. So just remember that this is a very common experience for everyone. Everybody feels this about tango. If you don't feel it right away, I'm sure you'll feel it at some point. And I think it's common for women to feel this a little bit more because we're sort of having to learn uh, multiple new skills at once. And men have to do that too. But if you're a woman learning to follow, for example, you have to learn to walk backwards first in heels, which is no small feat. And then you also have to learn how to follow the leader and how to respond to them. And so it's it seems to be a really common experience for women, especially to get very frustrated right away and to just 
the moment they start feeling a little bit of that resistance, they're just like, okay, never mind, never mind. I don't know it. I'm just, I'm just difficult. There's nothing I can do. I'm just effective. And, but as I remind uh, my students, this is something I learned recently from the Andrew Huberman podcast, who uh, is a huge inspiration of mine. You've probably heard me talk about him before, but he talked about uh, research that shows that the learning process itself, which is that moment when the brain is starting to learn, feels like a complete loss of understanding. Like when we hit that wall and when we're looking at something and it does not make sense and there's that feeling of frustration, that is the learning process. So when you feel that way, you're right where you're supposed to be. So don't worry about not getting it. And remember, or even keep track of this, I'd love for you to pay attention to this, that you might go to a class and you uh, learn something and it doesn't make any sense and you're so frustrated. And then you come back a week later, you try it again and you completely get it. Or you forget about it and you come back to it a year later and you have it. So it's a very, again, remember, not linear. So these experiences of being frustrated with not understanding is a very, very frequent experience with learning tango. So don't worry about that if you're feeling um, a lot of those emotions. Now, number five, of all the priorities that you might have as a beginner uh, tango dancer, of course, you knew might be going to a class once a week, twice a week. Maybe you're taking privates. Uh, maybe you're going to some technique classes. Maybe you're taking workshops. Maybe you're starting to go to practicas and milongas. And you might think to yourself, well, what is, what is the most important thing for me to focus on? Uh, is it, what is more, more important, a vocabulary? Do I need to work on musicality? Do I need to go to, how many times a week should I be going to class? Or how many times a week should I be going to Malanga, things like that. And in hindsight, I believe strongly that the number one priority of all the things that you could do is dancing, dancing as much as possible, not going to class, not drilling in front of a mirror, not going to workshops, not not doing tango movement as an exercise, but actual dancing. And that is what happens at the Malonga. So of all the things that you could be doing, the actual floor time on the dance floor is the most important because really that's when most of the learning takes place. You think it might be in the class, but remember, we only have that this much capacity to actually take in information in class. And then it's like, okay, forget it. We don't remember, right? It's, it's, we don't know what we're taking in. It's just sort of flooding into our minds. But when we're dancing, it's a practical space where you're actually practicing the principles that are being taught to you. So you're sort of starting to lay down those neural pathways in your mind and your body so that you begin to recognize these mechanics and recognize certain movement patterns. The more you can get those in your body, the quicker you can get those in your body, the faster you'll progress. And this is what happened for me. I know, I know that there's a lot of teachers out there who think and preach that you're supposed to go to a lot of classes that they, they, um, feel like it's an insult when a dancer does not go to class. I, I get it. But for me, I'll say this, that I've taken a lot of classes. I've taken tons of workshops. But the thing that really was the best education for me is actual floor time. When I was in Buenos Aires, I, especially, you know, towards the end of my second time there and the third trip I went, I didn't take many classes. I just went to milongas. I just put in that time dancing with as many people as possible so I can get that experience. And I feel ultimately the biggest obstacles, the biggest fears, and the biggest growth happens on the dance floor. And for some people, taking classes and 
believing that you have to get a certain to a certain level before you go to the malanga is sort of a strategy to um to prevent facing those fears so we're sort of procrastinating we're we're saying well i'm not ready yet i'm not ready yet as soon as i get here i this is you know i'll be dancing as soon as i know this and that you know as soon as i get to this level the reality is uh just go for it just start dancing as much as possible even if you've only had a month of tango start going to the malanga even if you don't dance at the malanga just go and be there and try to sort of take it all in and the way i think about surfing right this idea that you have to just sort of allow the wave to take you you can't tell the wave to slow down and and be like hold on hold on let me let me get it all together for remind me i have to be in this pl-. no you don't you don't have that time you have to just sort of be sucked into it and experience what it's like it doesn't matter how long you wait until you have to experience this you will experience it so the earlier you can allow yourself to focus on just the dancing just the thing that you actually want so if you're like me and you have that burning desire in your body to dance and experience music and lose yourself in that flow and that timeless space with another person that that beautiful magical other dimensional experience if you're after that go after it right away don't wait until you have your x y and z's and your tic tac toes and everything's lined up you need to focus on it right away as soon as possible and to that end i also want to point out number 7 and i think i just kind of gave it away too is you don't need to know a lot to enjoy tango you don't need to have a bunch of stuff already under your belt to actually experience the magic of tango. So again, it's this sneaky little mindset trick that you might have that says, "Well, I'm not ready to do this because I still don't know how to do this. I'm not ready to go to Malanga because I don't know my ochos. I don't know my musicality. I'm not ready because I'm still a beginner." You might say these things, but to experience the euphoria that is tango you actually don't need much and i know this for a fact from so many stories i've heard one of them recently was that a woman shared with me that she uh went to a tango cafe in buenos aires and she did not know tango her husband was dancing but she didn't and she just was sort of taking in the environment drinking her coffee and then the music came on and she just felt this surge of inspiration and she just fell in love with the music like that and her husband just invited her on the dance floor and said don't worry just you know just just be here with me hug me and be here with me and in that moment that's it she felt it she experienced tango she did not know any moves it was like a direct hook up to the tango line uh without having any knowledge of it so of course after that she learned tango and she polished her movements and she became a, a tango dancer and she still dances however it wasn't required for her to know all the movements before she actually experienced it So don't get caught up in this idea that until you are of a certain level you're not really going to be experiencing tango or that you need to you know make yourself good enough in order to experience the more you go out dancing the more chances you have of of just hooking up into that tango space right and it might happen with people that you least expect and you might even experience it uh even if you don't believe you're going to experience it it might just happen but the the key the key is to make yourself available to it and you know in other ways you can you make it happen can you force it to happen not really you know tango is like a cat can you make a cat do anything no you can 
request it. You can create the circumstances that would manipulate, somehow influence the cat's behavior and make them do something, perhaps. But that's about it, you know? And so with tango, it's the same way. You have to make yourself available to experiencing its power. And then with that vulnerability, take it in and allow yourself to just go there. Go go straight for the thing that you really, really want, which is that beautiful self-expression that we all get so much of in tango. Now, the other thing uh, I would recommend right off the bat as a beginner is for you to focus on connecting with people, forming meaningful connections with people, making friends, finding your pod, finding your bubble of people that you jive with, that you connect with. Because tango has so many bells and whistles to it, there's the whole uh, social side of it that's very complicated and difficult to navigate at first. There is the technical side of it that's, you know, really nerdy and sort of complicated as well. And there's also musicality and there's that whole nerdy world. And it can become sort of overwhelming for you to keep tabs on where you're at. Sometimes it will feel too much over your head or you get too discouraged by the lack of progress or you'll go and you'll have a terrible night at a milonga and nobody danced with you or everybody that you danced with was terrible and whatever, negative experience. And if you experience all of that in isolation, a lot of times it becomes more and more difficult to find a reason to go out or to go to tango. You know, it's just, it's so like, oh, I just hate feeling like I'm not really making progress. And so sometimes, you know, for me, it's difficult to be incentivized to do something if the only incentive is just accomplishment of certain levels you know, because it's like, oh, it's so hard. But if I have other people who are connected with my process, maybe I have friends in tango who are also struggling the same way, or they're going to the Malanga and I want to see them, I will have more of an incentive to go. And frequently friends are sort of like the safety net that we have in tango that's really supportive that at any moment you can turn to someone and just say, hey, I want to I wanna ask you a question. I want your opinion. What do you think? Or, man, I had a terrible time. How, what, what's your night looking like, you know? It, it feels uh, very nourishing and really supportive to know that you're not alone. You're not alone through this process. So as soon as possible, again, I would even rank that. Uh, I don't know if I'm pissing anybody off when I say that. I would rank that as more important than learning tango movements. Dancing as much as possible, making friends, that's what's going to keep you in tango because the technical stuff is going to come or it might not and it's frustrating and it's kind of fluctuates quite a bit. So if you don't have that other support or incentive to continue to go, when it turns really sour in the technical department. You know, you might feel like, ugh, it's just too much work. And people start complaining about how there's no payoff. Like, why? Why am I doing this? There's so much suffering. I'm not really having fun anymore. And that's where friends can step in. And that's where just dancing can step in, where you can just let go. Let go of all of that, you know, weight of requirement about what it's supposed to be like. And friends sort of pull you back into that more friendly space um, that is very helpful. All right, so we've gone through a lot here. I'm going to finish with number eight. So I'll just uh, count off the ones that we've heard so far. Tango is not linear. Years doesn't equal quality. Teachers disagree. Lots of contradiction. That's okay. It's okay to not get it right? The learning process is kind of mysterious when it comes to tango. The most important thing for you is to dance, 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 dance as much as possible. Take every opportunity. If you have a choice, 
between going to a class and going to a malanga, go to the malanga. <laughs> and I know some of you will disagree, and that's fine. But those of you for whom this is a liberating thought that you don't have to go to class, you can just go dance. Take that. Take the permission from me to not take another class and just go dancing. Uh, also, you need to, you don't need to know a lot to actually enjoy tango. You don't. You can access it right away with the skills that you have and you do need friends. So make sure that you put significant amount of your energy <laughs> into just having fun with people. You know, really make it a point to connect and form bonds with people so that uh, you have that support. And last but not least, this is probably the one that encapsulates all of it. And I wrote down, bite the bullet. <laughs> that phrase, bite the bullet. You know, recently I've taken on a new ritual a few months ago after listening to another <laughs> Andrew Huberman podcast uh, where he talks about sleep and he recommends uh, taking two-minute cold showers in the morning as a way of regulating your, uh, your internal clock. So I started doing this a few, a few months ago and um, every morning I know that I'm going to do it and I do it for two minutes and every morning there's just this feeling like, really? You really going to do this? This is a terrible idea. Do you feel how cold it is already? I'm so warm right now. I don't want to be cold. And every time the shower turns on, there's this feeling of like, oh my God, this is going to be so painful. Every single time I feel that, but I go in, I do it afterwards. I feel amazing and I do it the next day. So tango kind of feels that way at the beginning everything feels like you're biting the bullet. Everything feels scary. It feels scary to go to class. It feels scary to ask questions. It feels scary to contradict somebody to who might be giving you feedback and you disagree. It might feel scary to go to a milonga or to go to a festival or to travel somewhere as a beginner. All of these things are uh, very scary. For beginners and my encouragement is as much as you can to the whatever degree is appropriate for you of course bite the bullet go into the thing that's scary that's my encouragement to you sometimes it's gonna work out other times it's not gonna work out sometimes it'll be awesome other times it's not gonna be awesome but that's okay I think that a lot of progress does not happen in tango is because people are just too afraid to bite the bullet. Recently, I was at a milonga and there was a woman who was there for the first time and she's a beginner. She just started a couple of months ago and she was at this milonga and because she's so new, she doesn't know all the etiquette with Cavaseo and she was just coming up to men and asking them to dance and she was dancing the whole time it, and it's such a big no-no in tango culture to to do that right but i thought my gosh it's such a uh, a fresh form of rebellion in a way i mean she's not meaning it that way but you know having the balls to do that i respect that and i think we all can benefit from just going for it the answer to self doubt what what do we need to do with self doubt is action that's the answer to self-doubt. Whenever you're doubting yourself, act. Do something to face that doubt. Go into the fear, bite the bullet, go to the malanga, ask somebody to dance, make a fool of yourself, step on somebody's toes, make the mistake. It's, you know, like that feeling of embarrassment that we're so afraid of. I tell you, I mean, I've talked about this a lot. It's, you know, sometimes it's it's crippling. We're so afraid of making a mistake or sounding stupid or, I mean, I still feel this way and I'm, this is my <laughs> whatever number podcast. And I still, when I talk, I have, you know, self doubt present on some level. And it's just part of the practice that we get up and we decide to take that cold shower and we just go for it. So with your journey and tango, 
I do hope that you take those risks, whatever they are for you right now, whatever it is that you are scared of doing, I encourage you to, to tap into it and go ahead and do it or we do a part of it. You know, uh, I definitely feel like it's a very valuable uh, approach to learning tango. So those are my top eight things that I recommend uh, for beginners to keep in mind. And I know this is not an exhaustive list. And I know some of you listening have some things to add to that. I want to know what are those lessons that you've learned over the years, looking back, that maybe you, you feel like you could have said that to your younger self to make it easier, to make tango a little bit more accessible for you when you first started. Or what are some of the tips and tools that you've come across since you started that really opened up your mind and helped you uh, push through some sort of boundary or wall? So I would love to hear your feedback. You can message me on social media at I am so tango or email me at connect at I am so tango.com. I look forward to bantering with you next week. And please don't forget Horacio's seminar on Saturday. Check it out. I hope to see you there. Have a great rest of your week. We'll chat later. Ciao.